when we're when we're talking about anticipated grants, this is a good example. There were grants two through nine, so seven grants over the course of that period that reimbursed for the for the initial financing of that. So what why there's a balance right now is through the time the airport decided there were some other capital investments, the fuel farm and some other things that they used that they went ahead and used some of those funds to pay for some of those improvements. So this is a good example of they received 90% of the $1.6 million back to the community to pay off that debt. And that balance there, they just chose to reinvest it into some other capital uh, projects. That's correct. And I don't know the exact number of years it was uh, scheduled for. Uh, but it was under the advice of John Julian that we do this, and at a point in time when we got low enough, we refinanced it and moved out for a couple more years as we just did this last December, and we plan on rolling it into the new loan. Thanks. But we had have, we have every intention of paying it off if we, whatever happens. And the same thing goes for this one, that if at the end of the however many years it is, uh, Jackson County Bank is willing to work with us, and I assume First Financial will be also to uh, work out a loan payment sequence to pay it off. We will not falter. Thanks. Did that answer your question, sir? It does. Thank you. As, uh, as, you keep, as uh, people have talked uh, this evening, and thank you for your opinion. Thank you for getting involved in the city. I would love to see this kind of a, uh, a representation of the community at every decision we make, whether it's chickens or airports. Uh, but uh, I can tell you that this councilman has never received a dime from anyone. I ran for three elections. I funded every election. I took no dime from anyone. And if anyone wanted to have coffee with me, I paid for my own coffee. That's how serious I take this position. I've never had my back scratched. I've never had favors. And quite frankly, I resent. I am offended by that remark. There's a couple things in life that I take very seriously. That's my family and my salvation. Don't ever talk about my family, and I guard my salvation. But those of you that use scripture, those of you that said, we're going to hell, I think Jamie said it, don't judge, you're going to be judged too. And I can guarantee you that my salvation is very solid. And I was offended by that, and I wanted to make that clear. The decision, this decision alone, is the single most difficult decision, the most delicate issue that I've had to consider in my three terms on council. I'm going to be drop dead honest with you folks. Early in my first term, I took the position of being against the airport expansion. I set up a special email, and I'm not sure how it was worded in the, uh, on the video that Mr. Hanman has, but this is exactly what it was meant to mean. This is what happened. I set up a special email account that was specifically for response to those opposing and or supporting the airport expansion. Of the emails I received, 70 to 80% of those emails was to oppose the airport. I received probably about 20 to 25, maybe 30 emails. A lot of these emails was from family members 
and uh, so they're on there. Okay, I'm going on. In bad judgment, I prematurely joined the opposition because I felt it was what the majority of the people wanted. My thought was that I was elected to represent the people and I would be their voice. After I publicly took my stand of, the op of opposition, I was inundated with many more that were supportive of the expansion. I then realized that I had not done my homework and had spoken before I had the facts. I could have done one of two things. I could have stood my ground, though I knew this was necessary for the economic development, or suffer public humility, humiliation <clears throat> by, as one opposition publicly said, flop my vote. I take pride in the fact that I had the integrity to admit my ignorance and stand and change my position. The most difficult part of this project is the potential of using eminent domain to obtain the land necessary to bring this to fruition. I sympathize with landowners. I truly do. Many of you I consider my friends. Some of you I attend church with. Please understand my position of doing what I feel is best for the majority of the people of the city of Greensburg. I've been reminded of similar pain that was felt when Interstate 74 was constructed and when State Road 3, State Road 46 bypass was constructed. Had these projects not been done, I don't believe we would be sitting here this evening as one of the top two or three counties in the state with the lowest unemployment. It is my opinion that this airport project must move forward to accommodate the growth of industry in our community. Most have put their support and some have written letters of support and desire, and I'm talking about the industries, to have the extended runway for the success of their business or industry. I don't know that I'm at liberty to say who those were, but I did ask about Honda. We do have a letter from Honda saying they need the expansion of the airport. Well, they got more money than we got. I guess my comments would pretty much echo a lot of what Darryl, everything Daryl said. So, I mean, I, I feel for landowners, I do. Um, but I also look at what's best for our community, and that's what we're here to represent and what we're here to do. Right? I want to make sure that there's jobs in our community for my kids. I've got two kids in college, and I want to make sure when they come back, they've got a place to come back to. I'd like to see them here. Right? I'd like to make sure my grandkids have places, you know, a place to work here, right? And that's, that's not going to happen if we don't look forward and look at progress. Those things won't happen. I, I just... I think this is unfortunate, I, I, but I think this is absolutely the right thing to do and we have to move forward and do these things. Um, I just prepared something short here. Uh, times like these prove that you can't please everybody all the time. Um, after much consideration, my own research, prayer. Um, I feel that the airport is vital for um, our community to move forward. Um, some would argue that it's simply something that we don't need. Improved infrastructure is, is vital to growth. Um, I feel that if we want to continue to grow, expanding the runway now while there's funding available is the best option. What happens years down the road if we if we have to have it and then we have to force our citizens to pay for it because it has to happen. I'm not going to listen to this garbage anymore. 
the airport authority has sustained herself thus far, and I feel like expanding the runway um, is not going to change that. We can't always make important decisions on what ifs. We have to rely on the data presented. Sometimes um, educated chances have to be taken. Not knowing exactly what the outcome will be, we can predict this or that, but in the end it's just that, it's a prediction. I feel strongly that the rewards will outweigh the risks. Well, um, unlike the previous three, I didn't have any prepared statements. Um, being new to this and only being involved in conversations about the airport over the last year or so, um, I'm, I'm not to the point where I'm ready to actually say I'm for the airport, but I'm not to the point where I'm saying I guess there, I've made some notes and some things that I want to take some additional <coughs> I'd like to look at the environmental. Um, I'd like to look at some of the financials from the airport report to validate some comments that have been made about uh, revenue. And, um, there was a contradictory statement last month about how much revenue the airport board brings in currently. Um, I'd like to see a uh, like an operation maintenance cost comparison of our current airport projected to what the new airport would be to help me make my final decision. Well, I would agree. This, I think this is probably the most difficult issue we have wrestled with uh, in this council. And anybody that knows me know I tend to be very analytical and deliberative in, in how I <coughs> how I approach issues. I um, even was reading different studies around the country about the impact of local airports on their community, and uh, unfortunately, there just aren't very many that uh, it's not really an issue that's been studied uh, very exhaustively. You know, things that uh, uh, that, uh, that I would like to know for certain before uh, passing the ordinance is some of the questions I asked earlier about the finances. I want to make sure that the airport is able to, to remain financially sound and is able to continue to operate and maintain its uh, operations without the need for uh, city dollars going into it. I think that that's important look forward to hearing uh, some of the information come out uh, for the next one, next month's vote, assuming that it passes tonight. Um, you know, in infrastructure projects have always had uh, <coughs> a lot of controversy surrounding them. You know, even going back to history, thinking about the 1840s when, when the canals were being built and then all the controversy that surrounded that railroads came along and made those obsolete. Uh, you know, those are the kind of risks that occur when you when you do things like this. There's a risk when <coughs> the way was built, and there was a risk when the industrial park uh, you put all the money into that. There's a risk for highways. There's, there's always a risk uh, that something uh, may not turn out how you think it will turn out. But at the same time, um, we can't just uh, say no because because of fear. Uh, I don't think that we should base decisions based on fear, but uh, in good reason and trying to seize what what opportunities come our way. What what really struck me uh, as I've been thinking about this and talking to people about this is for one the the leverage that we can have uh, to, for every dollar that, that we put into it that we get twenty dollars match to it. I think, I think that's my, my math is right on that. Uh, that's unheard of in infrastructure funding. Uh, and that's, I've not seen that in any, in any other project that, that we've done. The other thing in talking to, to EDC is they, they receive uh, uh, solicitations for better word uh, of businesses uh, looking to locate in maybe our state or surrounding states, and they'll have a list of things, a list of infrastructure needs that they have um, that they're looking for. And so often, in 
airport uh, that would handle business operations is on that list more and more and more. Uh, you know, this information like that isn't necessarily always public, uh, but it is what's out there. And it's true that we have a, a very low unemployment rate, but I remember when I moved here uh, 11 years ago, we had a very high unemployment rate. You know, we were desperate for jobs. The economy is cyclical. There will come a time where we will not have a low unemployment rate. We will again be looking for jobs. Do I think that an airport will be the uh, end-all, be-all? No, I don't think that. Do I think that the airport is a tool in, in, a, in a toolbox to help us attract uh, business and industry and talent? Yes, I do think that. Just like broadband, just like good roads, just like uh, strong uh, fiscal uh, strength of the city, just like the interstate, just like the highway, that we compete with not just our neighboring cities and not just our other states, but truly is a global economy. We have to be able to continue to look for ways to differentiate ourselves from people of like cities. I, I did compare cities of, of like size to Greensburg and the size of their airports. We have the second, from, we, from what I could find, the second <laughs> shortest uh, runway. And of course, the runway link does correspond to the types of aircraft that can land um, in cities of our size. And the, the shortest one was a, was a, a, a dirt strip. And this one, the way the expansion is proposed, would put us right there in the pack with cities of similar size and situation. Um, so for those reasons, I will support the uh, motion to pass the ordinance on the first reading. Uh, we'll reserve the final decision on the second reading based upon the, the financial information. Aaron, just a couple of questions on what you said. Can you? elaborate on uh, what cities you looked at and just throw some familiar cities out there? Uh, pretty much look for ones that are around our size. Uh, so Wabash, uh, Washington, Martinsville. I look for cities kind of in the 10 to 15,000 population range. Okay. Questions or statements? Or, uh, I would receive a motion for for 2019-6 airport. So moved. Second. I'll second the motion. Roll call vote. I believe last month you had a, a attachment that showed you the area proposed for the annexation, which was just an outline in the former Dr. Blue's office, I believe. Yes, yeah, sorry.